This is a one-piece Acrosoft lens that is dislocated along with the whole capsule bag complex. Uh, there's some vitreous herniated into the anterior chamber, so I'm going to displace that with some dispersive viscoelastic. Now we're going to make a radial groove with a diamond blade, and this groove starts at about uh, one and a half to two millimeters posterior to the limbus and goes back about three and a half millimeters posterior to the limbus. And I'm going to puncture this with my diamond blade to create two sclerotomies at the top and bottom of the groove. I'm now feeding a Gore-Tex suture into the lumen of a wide-bore 30-gauge needle, and I'm going to use this to introduce the suture into the eye. The 30-gauge needle is now going to be passed through the capsular bag from underneath between the haptic and the lens optic, and it's going to carry the suture through the capsular bag. This is a very gentle, uh, atraumatic way of doing this, very controlled, as you can see. And now I'm going to grab that suture and pull it out the other side. I'm going to reintroduce the suture through the paracentesis, and using a 25 gauge forceps, I'm going to come through the sclerotomy at the top of my radial groove and retrieve the suture. So the suture is now retrieved on top of the haptic, so it is uh, wrapped around the haptic through the capsular bag, lassoing the haptic. I'll now repeat this exactly 180 degrees away. I'm going to make a radial groove going from about 1.5 millimeters posterior to the limbus to about 3.5 millimeters posterior to the limbus, and I'm going to puncture and create sclerotomies at the top and bottom of the groove. The, the uh, Gore-Tex suture is inserted into the 30-gauge needle, and once again, the 30-gauge needle will be used to pass the Gore-Tex suture through the capsular bag. Now here the lens is a little decentered, so I'm going to recenter the capsular bag with my right hand using a micro-grasper, so when I puncture through the capsular bag, it will center the lens bag complex. Here I'm using my micro grasper to grab the suture, pull it out through the paracentesis, and I'm now going to bring it back in through the paracentesis. I pull it out of the eye to create some slack, otherwise when I try to tighten this, it'll uh, pull the lens to, the, uh, to that side. So I'm going to grasp the uh, suture, pull it out through the superior sclerotomy, and uh, now when I tie this, it'll secure the lens on each side. So here we're going to tie it on each side. I'm going to do a slip knot. I'm passing two throws in the same direction, and this will not lock. This means I can tighten and loosen this. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, so I can then adjust the tension on both sides. And you really do not want to make this too tight. You want it uh, just, just enough to hold things in place, and no more than that. I also want it just tight enough so that the uh, suture lies at the base of the radial groove. Now I'm going to lock the suture by reversing my uh, direction of uh, my throws. And so now the suture is locked, I can cut it, and I can push the knot into the superior sclerotomy. This way the knot is buried and the suture is lying at the base of the radial groove. I'm going to put a little pressure on the lens here with a Sinsky hook, and you can see that it's really very nicely secured, very stable, and centered. I'm now going to uh, lock my suture here and uh, do an extra throw just to be safe. We'll cut this short. And then I'm going to use the 25 gauge forceps to push the knot into the eye through the superior sclerotomy. With the knot buried and the suture at the base of the radial groove, this is not going to extrude. We're now going to do a pars plane of atrectomy because at the beginning of the case, as you recall, there was vitreous in the anterior chamber that I displaced with viscoelastic. I'm concerned that when I remove the viscoelastic, I will get into the uh, vitreous. 
So we're going to clean this up a bit. Uh, here I'm placing an anterior chamber infusion line and doing a pars plane of vitrectomy. And I'm starting uh, in the region where I saw the uh, vitreous uh, herniating. With the anterior infusion and the pars plane of vitrectomy, this is a very efficient way to remove vitreous from behind the lens bag complex that might be coming forward. We'll now stain with triamcinolone to see if there's any remaining uh, vitreous present. Uh, after placing the triamcinolone and flushing with a little BSS, uh, I'll go back and do a little bit more pars plane of vitrectomy. You can see the uh, vitreous coming into the tip of the vitrector. And uh, then there's a small wisp here in the anterior chamber, so I'm going to come through the paracentesis with the vitrector and remove this. And now the vitrectomy is completed. Conjunctiva is now closed on each side with a 10 nylon suture. We'll place some myocol in the anterior chamber to bring the pupil down. And uh, then after the pupil is uh, constricted, I'm going to do a uh, peripheral iridotomy with a vitrector to reduce the risk of postoperative reverse pupillary block. The patrol cars are moved and the case is completed. This is what the patient looked like the next day at the slit lamp. Uh, the lens was very stable and centered and the patient was 20-25 uncorrected and very happy with the uh, outcome. Thank you for your attention.